Good morning. We are beginning today with the Sri Vishnu Mahapurana, book four, uh, partway through chapter 13 on the um, Leela of the Siamantaka gem, um, starting with the time at which um, Akrura is in possession of the gem somewhat illicitly. Um, this, this is the um, enchanted gemstone of Surya Deva, which was uh, stolen through a murderous conspiracy and ended up in the hands of Akrura, who was one of the conspirators, though not the murderer, living in Dwaraka. Akrura, carefully considering the treasures which the precious jewel secured to him, since this jewel produces treasures daily, multiplying itself, well, not multiplying itself, but producing other treasures, constantly celebrated religious rites and purified with holy prayer, lived in affluence for 52 years. And through the virtue of that gem, there was no dearth nor pestilence in the whole country. At the end of that period, Shatrugna, the great grandson of Satpata, was killed by the Bhojas, and as they were in bonds of alliance with Akrura, he accompanied them in their flight from Dvaraka. From the moment of his departure, various calamities, portents, snakes, dearth, plague, and the like began to prevail, so that he whose emblem is Garuda, called to, referring to Krishna, called together the Yadavas, with Balabhadra and Ugrasena, and recommended them to consider how it was that so many prodigies should have occurred at the same time. On this Andhaka, one of the elders of the Yadu race thus spoke, wherever Svapalka, the father of Akrura, dwelt, their famine, plague, dearth, and other visitations were unknown. Once when there was want of rain in the kingdom of Kashi Raja, Svapalka was brought there and immediately there fell rain from the heavens. It happened also that the queen of Kashiraja conceived and was quick with a daughter. But when the time of delivery arrived, the child issued not from the womb. Twelve years passed away and still the girl was unborn. Then Kashiraja spoke to the child and said, Daughter, why is your birth thus delayed? Come forth, I desire to behold you. Why do you inflict this protracted suffering upon your mother? Thus addressed, the infant answered, If, father, you will present a cow every day to the Brahmanas, I shall at the end of three years more be born. The king accordingly presented a cow daily to the Brahmanas, and at the end of three years, the damsel came into the world. Her father called her Gandini and subsequently gave her to Sopalka um, in marriage when he came to the palace for his benefit. Gandini, as long as she lived, gave a cow to the Brahmanas every day. Akrura was her son by Sopalka, and his birth therefore proceeds from a combination of uncommon excellence. When a person such as he is, is absent from us, it is likely that famine, pestilence, and prodigies um, sh uh, should fail to occur. Let him then be invited to return. The faults of men of exalted worth must not be too severely scrutinized. Agreeably to the advice of Andhaka, the elder, the Yadava sent a mission, headed by Keshava, Ugrasena, and Balabhadra, to assure Akrura that no notice would be taken of any irregularity committed by him. And having satisfied him that he was in no danger, they brought him back to Dvaraka. Immediately on his arrival, in consequence of the properties of the jewel, which he secretly had on his person, the plague, dearth, famine, and every other calamity important ceased. Krishna, observing this, reflected that the descent of Akrura from Gandini and Svapalka was a cause wholly disproportionate to such an effect, and that some uh, powerful influence must be exerted to arrest the pestilence and famine. Of a surety, he said to himself, the great Siamantaka jewel is in his keeping, for such I have heard are amongst its properties. This Akrura, too, has lately been celebrating yagna after yagna. His own means are insufficient for such expenses. It is beyond a doubt that he has the jewel. Having come to this conclusion, he called a meeting of all the Yadavas at his house under the pretext of some festive celebration. When they were all settled, uh, when they were all seated and the purpose of their assembling had been explained and the business accomplished, Krishna entered into conversation with Akrura and after laughing and joking, said to him, Kinsman, you are a very prince in your liberality. 
but we know very well that the precious jewel which was stolen by Sudhanvan was delivered by him to you and is now in your possession, to the great benefit of this kingdom. So let it remain. We all derive advantage from its virtues. But Balabhadra suspects that I have it, and therefore, out of kindness to me, show it to the assembly. When Akrura, who had the jewel with him, was thus taxed, he hesitated what he should do. If I deny that I have the jewel, thought he, they will search my person and find the gem hidden amongst my clothes. I cannot submit to a search. So reflecting, Akrura said to Narayana, the cause of the whole world, It is true that the Siamantaka gem was entrusted to me by Shatadhanvan when he went from hence. I expected every day that he would ask me for it, and with much inconvenience, therefore, have kept it until now. The charge of it has subjected me to much anxiety, that I have been incapable of enjoying any pleasure and have never known a moment's ease. Afraid that he would think me unfit to retain possession of a jewel so essential to the welfare of the kingdom, I forbore to mention to you its being in my hands. But now take it yourself, and give the care of it to whom you please. Having thus spoken, Akrura drew forth from his garments a small gold box, and took from it the jewel. On displaying it to the assembly of the Yadavas, the whole chamber where they sat was illuminated by its radiance. This, said Akrura, is the Siamantaka gem, which was consigned to me by Shatadhanvan. Let him to whom it belongs now take it. When the Yadavas beheld the jewel, they were filled with astonishment and loudly expressed their delight. Balabhadra immediately claimed the jewel as his property jointly with Achyuta, Achyuta being a name of Krishna, as formerly agreed upon while Satyabhama demanded it as her right, as it had originally belonged to her father, and left her father's possession only by his murder and its theft. Between these two, his brother and his wife, Krishna considered himself as an ox between the two wheels of a cart, and thus spoke to Akrura in the presence of all the Yadavas. This jewel has been exhibited to the assembly in order to clear my reputation. It is the joint right of Balabhadra and myself, and that is the patrimonial inheritance of Satyabhama. But this jewel, to be advantage to the whole kingdom, should be taken charge of by a person who leads a life of perpetual brahmacharya. If worn by an impure individual, it will be the cause of his death. Now, as I have 16,000 wives, I am not qualified to have the care of it. It is not likely that Satyabhama will agree to the conditions that would entitle her to the possession of the jewel, which would be to divorce Krishna. And as to Balabhadra, he is too much addicted to wine and the pleasures of sense to lead a life of self-denial. We are therefore out of the question, and all the Yadavas, Balabhadra, Satyabhama, and myself request you, most bountiful Akrura, to retain, <coughs> to retain the care of the jewel, as you have done hitherto, for the general good, for you are qualified to have the keeping of it, and in your hands it has been productive of benefit to the country. You must not decline compliance with our request. Akrura, thus urged, accepted the jewel and thenceforth wore it publicly round his neck, where it shone with dazzling brightness, and Akrura moved about like the sun, wearing a garland of light. He who calls to mind the vindication of the character of Krishna from false aspersions shall never become the subject of unfounded accusation in the least degree, and living in the full exercise of his sense shall be cleansed of every sin. Chapter 14. Um, and here we resume the genealogy of the Somavanshi dynasty. The younger brother of Anamitra was Shini. His son was Satyaka. His son was Yuyudhana, also known by the name of Satyaki. His son was Asanga. His son was uh, Tuni. His son was Yugandhara. These princes were termed the Shainayas, the descendants of the great Raja Shini. In the family of Anamitra, Prishni was born. His son was Svapalka, the sanctity of whose character has been described. The younger brother of Svapalka was named Chitraka. Svapalka had by Gandini, besides Akrura, Upamadgu, Rudura, Shari Mejaya, Giri, Kshatra, Kshatra, 
ಕ್ಷತ್ರೋಪಕ್ಷತ್ರ ಶತ್ರುಘ್ನ ಅರಿಮರ್ಡನ ಧರ್ಮಧ್ರಿಸ್ ಭ್ರಷ್ಟಸರ್ಮನ್ ಗಂಧಮೋಜವಾಹ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರತಿವಾಹ ಹಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾರ್ ಅ ಡಾಟರ್ ಟು ತಾರ ದೇವವಾತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಉಪದೇವ ವರ್ ದ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಕ್ರೂರ ದ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಿತ್ರಿಕ ವರ್ ಪ್ರತು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿಪ್ರತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಧಕ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಕುಕ್ಕುರ ಭಜಮಾನ ಶುಚಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಂಬುಲವರ್ಹಿಷ ದ ಸನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕುಕ್ಕುರ ವಾಸ್ ವೃಷ್ಟ ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಕಪೋತ ರೋಮನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ವಾಸ್ ವಿಲೋಮನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಭವ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಚಂದನೋ ದಂಧಕ ಛಂದನೋ ಛಂದನೋ ದಕ ದುಂಧುಬಿ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗಂಧರ್ವ ತುಂಬರು ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸೆವಾಸ್ಟಿಯೋ ಬಿಂಗ್ ದ ಗಂಧರ್ವ ತುಂಬರು ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅಭಿಜಿತ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಪುನರ್ವಸು ಹಿಸ್ ಸನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಆಹುಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾರ್ ಅ ಡಾಟರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಆಹುಕಿ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಹುಕ ಆಫ್ ಆಹುಕ ಫಾರ್ ದೇವಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಉಗ್ರ ಸೇನ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ ದೇವಕ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಸನ್ಸ್ ದೇವವತ್ ಉಪದೇವ ಸುದೇವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇವರಕ್ಷಿತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಡಾಟರ್ಸ್ ವ್ರಕದೇವ ಉಪದೇವ ದೇವರಕ್ಷಿತ ಶ್ರೀದೇವ ಶಾಂತಿದೇವ ಸಹದೇವ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇವಕಿ ಆಲ್ ದ ಡಾಟರ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಮೆರೀಡ್ ಟು ವಸುದೇವ ದ ಸನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಉಗ್ರ ಸೇನ ವರ್ ಕನ್ಸ as in the the tyrant kansa nyagrodha sunaman kanka shanko subhumi rashtrapala yudhamushti and tushtimat and his daughters were kansa kansavati sutanu rashtrapali and kanki the son of bhajamana was vidurata his son was shura his son was shamin his son was pratikshatra his son was swayambhoja His son was Hridika, who had Kratavarman, Shatadhanu, Deva Midhusha, and others. Shura, the son of Deva Midhusha, was married to Marisha and had by her ten sons. On the birth of Vasudeva, who was, which was the name of one of these sons, the gods to whom the future is manifest foresaw that the divine being would take a human form in his family, and thereupon they sounded with joy the drums of heaven. From this circumstance, Vasudeva was also called anakadundhubi which referred to the drums of heaven that were heard upon his birth his brothers were deva bhaga deva sravas anadhrishti karundhaka vatsabalaka sranjaya shyama shamika and gandusha and his sisters were prata sruta deva sruta kirti sruta sravas and rajadhi devi shura had a friend named kunti bhoja to whom as he had no children as kunti bhoja had no children he presented um indu his own daughter pritta gave her to kunti bhoja to adopt she was married to pandu and bore him yudhishthira bhima and arjuna who were in fact the sons of the deities dharma vayu and indra this of course it refers to three of the five pandavas the other two being from his other wife while she was yet unmarried also she had a son named karna begotten by the divine aditya pandu had another wife named madri uh who had by the twin sons of aditya nasatya and dasra the devas um known together as the ashvins or the ashvino two sons nakula and sahadeva srota deva was married to the karusha prince Vridha Sharman and bore him the fierce Asura Dantavakra. Drishtaketu, Raja of Kaikeya, married Sruta Kirti and had by her Santardana and four other sons known as the five Kaikeyas or the five great Kaikeya chiefs. Jayasena, king of Avanti, married Raja Dhidevi and had Vinda and Anuvinda. Sruta Sravas was wedded to Damaghosha, Raja of Chedi, and bore him Shishupala. This prince was in a former existence or former birth, the unrighteous but valiant monarch of the Daityas, Hiranyakashipu, who was killed by the divine guardian of creation in his Narasingha avatar. He was next, the ten-headed sovereign Ravana, whose unequaled prowess, strength, and power were overcome by the lord of the three worlds, Rama. having been killed by the deity in the form of raghava he had long enjoyed the reward of his virtues in exemption from an embodied state 
but had now received birth once more as Shishupala, the son of Damaghosha, king of Chedi. In this character, he renewed with greater inveteracy than ever his hostile hatred toward the god surnamed Pundari Kaksha, a portion of the supreme being who had descended to lighten the burdens of the earth and was in consequence slain by him again. But from the circumstance of his thoughts being constantly engrossed by the supreme being, even in hatred, Shishupala was united with him after death. For the Lord um, gives to those to whom he is favorable whatever they desire, and he bestows a heavenly and exalted fate even upon those whom he slays in his displeasure. Chapter 15. Maitreya said to his Guru Parashara, who has been narrating all this, Most eminent of all who cultivate piety, I am curious to hear from you, and you are able to explain to me, how it happened that the same being who, when killed by Vishnu as Hiranyakashipu and Ravana, obtained enjoyments which, though scarcely attainable by the immortals, were but temporary, should have been absorbed into the eternal Hari when slain by him in the person of Shishupala. Parashara said, when the divine author of creation, preservation, and destruction of the universe accomplished the death of Hiranyakashipu, he assumed a body composed of the figures of a lion and a man together, so that Hiranyakashipu was not aware that his destroyer was Vishnu. Although, therefore, the quality of purity derived from exceeding merit had been attained, yet his mind was perplexed by the predominance of the property of passion, or the Rajaguna. And the consequence of that intermixture was that he reaped, as the result of his death by the hands of Vishnu, only unlimited power and enjoyment upon earth as Dashanana, the sovereign of the three spheres. He did not obtain absorption into the supreme spirit, that is, without beginning or end, because his mind was not wholly dedicated to that sole object. So also Dashanana, which is another name of Ravana, being entirely subject to the passion of love and engrossed completely over the thoughts of Janaki or Sita, could not comprehend that the son of Dasharatha whom he beheld was in reality the divine Achyuta. At the moment of his death, he was impressed with the notion that his adversary was immortal, and therefore the fruit he derived from being slain by Vishnu was confined to his birth and the illustrious family of the kings of Chedi and the, exorc and the exercise of their extensive dominion. In this situation, Many circumstances brought the names of Vishnu to his notice, and on all these occasions, the enmity that had accumulated through successive births influenced his mind. And in speaking constantly with disrespect of Achyuta, he was ever repeating Achyuta's different appellations. Whether, whether walking, eating, sitting, or sleeping, his animosity was never at rest, and Krishna was ever present to his thoughts in his ordinary semblance, having eyes as beautiful as the leaf of a lotus, clad in bright yellow raiment, decorated with a garland, with bracelets on his arms and wrists and a diadem on his head, having four robust arms, bearing the conch, the disc, the mace, and the lotus, thus uttering his names even though in malediction, and dwelling upon his image though in enmity, he beheld Krishna when inflicting his death, radiant with resplendent weapons, bright with ineffable splendor in his own essence as the supreme being, and all his passion and hatred ceased in that moment, and he was purified from every defect, being killed by the chakram of Vishnu at the instant he thus meditated, all his sins were consumed by his divine adversary, and he was blended with him by whose might he had been slain. I have thus replied to your inquiries. He by whom the divine Vishnu is named or called to recollection, even in enmity, obtains a reward that is difficult of attainment to the asuras and the devas. How much greater shall be his recompense who glorifies the deity in fervor and in faith? Vasudeva, also called Anakadundhubi, had Rohini, Pauravi, Bhadra, Madira, Devaki, and several other wives. Um, so, um, Pauravi is not actually the name of one of his wives. Rather, two of his wives happened to have the same name, Rohini. Um, and so one of them sort of took on the nickname Pauravi to distinguish, to distinguish her from her co-wife with her same name. His sons by Rohini, the first, were Balabhadra, Sarana, Charu, Durmada, and others. 
Balabhadra espoused Revati and had by her Nisata and Ulmuka. The sons of Sarana were Marshti, Marshtimat, Shishu, Satyadhriti, and others. Badrashva, Bhadrabahu, Durgama, Bhuta, and others were born in the family of Rohini of the race of Puru. The sons of Vasudeva by Madhira were Nanda, Upananda, Kritaka, and others. Bhadra bore him Upanidhi, Gada, and others. By his wife Vaishali, he had one son named Kaushika. Devaki bore him six sons, Kirtimat, Sushena, Udayin, Bhadrasena, Rijudasa, and Bhadradeha, all of whom Kansa put to death immediately upon their births. When Devaki was pregnant the seventh time, Yoga Nidra, the sleep of devotion, sent by Vishnu, extricated the embryo from its maternal womb at midnight and transferred it to the womb of Rohini. And from having been thus taken away, the child who was Balarama received the name of Sankarsana. Next, the divine Vishnu himself, the root of the vast universal tree, inscrutable by the understandings of all gods, demons, sages, and men past, present, or to come, adored by Brahma and all the deities, he who is without beginning, middle, or end, being moved to relieve the earth of her load, descended into the womb of Devaki and was born as her son, Vasudeva. Yoganidra, proud to execute her, his orders, removed the embryo to Yasoda, the wife of Nanda the cowherd. This time embryo is, um, well, not technically wrong, a bit of a mistranslation because it was a newborn. Whereas it really was an embryo that she transferred in the case of Balarama, that was at only about seven months of pregnancy, and she and he was put into the womb of Rohini, whereas the newborn Vasudeva Krishna was born, and simply the infant was placed in the bed beside Yashoda. At his birth, the earth was relieved from all iniquity. The sun, moon, and planets shone with unclouded splendor for but a moment, because it was during a raging storm. All fear of calamitous portents was dispelled and universal happiness prevailed. From the moment he appeared, all humankind were led into the righteous path in him. While this powerful being resided in this world of mortals, he had 16,100 wives. This is a slight rounded figure to fit the verse uh, because the, the exact number was 16,108. Of these, the principal were Rukmini, Satyabhama, Jambavanti, Jatahasini, and four others. By these, the universal form, who is without beginning, begot 180,000 sons, of whom 13 are most renowned, Pradyumna, Charudeshna, Samba, and others. Pradyumna, the firstborn of Krishna, married Kakudvati, the daughter of Rukmin, and had by her Aniruddha. Aniruddha married Subhadra, the granddaughter of the same Rukmin, and she bore him a son named Vajra. The son of Vajra was Bahu, and his son was Sucharu. In this manner, the descendants of Yadu multiplied and there were many hundreds of thousands of them, so that it would be impossible to repeat their names in hundreds of years. Two verses relating to them are current. The domestic instructors of the boys in the use of arms amounted to three crores and 80, uh, and, and 80 lakhs. Who shall enumerate the whole of the mighty men of the Yadava race, who were tens of tens thousands and hundreds of hundred thousands in number? Those are the poetic verses said about them. Those powerful Daityas who were killed in the conflicts between them and the gods were born again upon earth as men, as tyrants and oppressors. And in order to check their violence, the Devas also descended to the world of mortals and became members of the 101 branches of the family of Yadu. Vishnu was to them a teacher and a ruler, and all the Yadavas were obedient to his commands. Whoever listens frequently to this account of the origin of the heroes of the race of Rishni shall be purified from all sins and obtain the sphere of Vishnu. Chapter 16. Parashara said, I shall now summarily give you an account of the descendants of Turvasu.
The son of Turvasu was Vahni. His son was Gobhanu. His son was Treshamba. His son was Karandhama. His son was Marutta. Marutta had no children, and he therefore adopted Dushyanta of the family of Puru, by which the line of Turvasu merged into that of Puru. This took place in consequence of the malediction denounced on his son by Yayati, uh, the curse that his line would fail. Um, interestingly, the Mahabharata adds that um, from Turvasu, from this Turvasu, the Yavanas sprang. Um, in other words, Greeks that he left the land of India, settled in what became Greece, um, and became a local chieftain there. Chapter 17. So that was, a that was the entirety of chapter 16, hardly one paragraph. Um, chapter 17 is actually just a single sentence. <laughs> the whole chapter is just a single sentence. Um, it reads, the son of Drohyu was Babhu, his son was Setu, his son was Aradvat, his son was Gandhara, his son was Dharma, his son was Dhrita, his son was Duryaman, his son was Pracheta, who had a hundred sons, and they were the princes of the lawless Mlechas, or the barbarians of the north. Um the Mahabharata adds of these barbarians of the north um, that these descendants of Durhya were called the Vaibhojas. It describes them as a people unacquainted with the use of vehicles or beasts of burden and who travel on rafts, a river folk, and says that they have no kings. Um, it is quite possible, given that these two paragraphs were split into their own chapters, that in an older version of the Vishnu Purana, these chapters were much longer, um, probably expanding on the lives of these people, but that in the manuscripts that have come down to us, if there ever was more of these chapters than just a sentence or two, it is lost. Chapter 18. Anu, the fourth son of Yayati, had three sons, Sabharana, Chakshusha, and Paramakekshu. Uh, I'm sorry, Paramekshu. The son of the first, the son of Sabharana, Sabhana, Sabhanara, was Kalanara. His son was Sranjaya, his son was Paranjaya, his son was Janamejaya, his son was Mahamani, his son was Mahamanas, who had two sons, Ushinara and Titikshu. Ushinara had five sons, Shivi, Trana, Gara, Krimi, and Darvan. Shivi had four sons, Vrshadarbha, Suvira, Kaikeya, and Madra. Titikshu had one son, Ushadrata. His son was Hema, his son was Suttapas, his son was Bali, on whose wife five sons were begotten by Dirgatamas, or, um, or Anga, Banga, Kalinga, Sukhma, and Pundra. And their descendants and the five countries they inhabited were known by the same names, called after them. Um, so these various um, branches from the lines of these various princes and kings um, gave rise to many different tribes, the Shaivas, the Yodheyas, the Navarashtras, the Ambhashtas. Uh, they founded the city of Krumila in, in, in ancient India. Um, these are different um, 
provinces and tribes in the west and northwest of India. The son of Anga was Para, his son was Divaratta, his son was Dharmaratta, his son was Chitraratta, his son was Romapada, also called Dasharatta, to whom, being childless, Dasharatta, the son of Aja, gave his daughter Shanta to be adopted. After this, Romapada had a son named Chaturanga, his son was Pratulaksha, his son was Champa, who founded the city of Champa, named after himself. Um, that city of Champapuri is still a city in India today. The son of Champa was Haryanga. His son was Bhadraratta, who had two sons, Vrahatkarman and Vrahadratta. The son of the first was Vrahadbhanu. His son was Vrahanmanas. His son was Jayadratta, who by a wife who was the daughter of a Kshatriya father and a Brahmani mother, had a son named Vijaya. His son was Dhriti. His son was Dhritavrata. His son was Satyakarman. His son was Adhiratta, who found Karna in a basket on the banks of the Ganga, where he had been abandoned by his mother Pratta. The son of Karna was Vrashasena. These were the Anga kings. You shall next hear who were the descendants of Puru. Chapter 19. The son of Puru was Janamejaya. His son was Prachinvat. His son was Pravira. His son was Manasyu, his son was Bhayada, his son was Samyati, his son was Ahamyati, uh, Ahamyati. his son was Radrashva, who had ten sons, Rateyu, Kakshayu, Sthandileyu, Ghrateyu, Jaleyu, Sthaleyu, Santateyu, Dhaneyu, Vaneyu, and Vrateyu. The son of Rateyu was, was Ranthinara, whose sons were Tansu, Apratirata, and Dhruva. The son of the second of these was Kanva, and his son was Medhatiti, from whom the Kanvayana Brahmanas descended. Um, also, the ten sons of Rodrashva, uh, all, of, all of the Ayus, um, were um, his wife was an Apsaras, a celestial Apsaras, and not a human. And so some, um, some Apsara Gandharva blood was infused into the dynasty at this point. Um, so the son of the second of these, the son of Kakshayu, uh, was Kanva, and his son was Medhatiti, from whom the Kanvayana Brahmanas descended. Medhatiti was also a great Maharshi um, who cognized many of the hymns of the Rig Veda. Anila was the son of Tansu, and he had four sons, of whom the eldest was Dushyanta. The son of Dushyanta was the emperor Bharata. A verse explanatory of his name is chanted by the gods. Um, um, with the mother as receptacle, it is the father by whom a son is begotten. Cherish, the son, uh, cherish thy son, Dushyanta. Treat not Shakuntala with disrespect. Sons who are born from their paternal loins rescue their progenitors from the Narakas. You are the parent of this boy. Shakuntala has spoken truth. From the expression cherish, Bharasva, the prince was called Bharata. Um, these two shlokas, which he has quoted, are quoted directly from the Mahabharata. Um, and it refers to a whole story going on, uh, which the context in which the devas said this, uh, which was that um, Dushyanta, the father of Bharata, uh, was denying that Bharata was his son falsely. And he knew that it was false. Um, he 
because that it, he had this child with a woman who lived in the forest alone, not even his wife, except in, by the Gandharva mode, as in they had sex in the woods. Um, he was denying uh, paternity of his son. Um, and the uh, Shakuntala, the woman, invoked the devas to testify to the truth um, that Dushyanta was indeed the father. So that was the context in which they chided him and demanded him to admit the truth. Bharata had by different wives, and Bharata, this great emperor Bharata, is the man after whom India is named to this day, um, since India is just um, a Western name. The actual name of the country still is Bharat after him, or Bharata Varsham. Bharata had by different wives nine sons, but they were put to death by their own mothers because Bharata remarked that they bore no resemblance to him and the women were afraid that he would therefore desert them. The birth of his sons being thus unavailing, Bharata sacrificed to the Maruts and they gave him Bharadvaja, the son of Brahaspati by Mamata, the wife of Uttatya, expelled by the kick of Dirgatamas, his half-brother before his time. This verse explains the purport of his appellation. Silly woman, said Brahaspati, cherish this child of two fathers, or Bharadvajam. No, Brahaspati, replied Mamata, do you take care of him? So saying, they both abandoned him. But from their expressions, it is so the story goes, the boy was called Bharadvaja. He was also termed Vitata, an allusion to the unprofitable or Vitata birth of the sons of Bharata. The son of Vitata was Bhavan Manyu. His sons were many, and amongst them the chief were Vrhatkshatra, Mahavirya, Nara, and Garga. The son of Nara was Sankriti. His sons were Ruchiradhi and Ranti Deva. The son of Garga was Shini, and their descendants called Gargyas and Shanyas, although Kshatriyas by birth, all became Brahmanas. The son of Mahavirya was Urukshaya, who had three sons, Trayaruna, Pushkarin, and Kapi, the last of whom became a Brahmana. The son of Rahatkshatra was Suhotra, whose son was Hastin, who founded the city of Hastinapur. The son of Hastin, the sons of Hastin were, uh, were Ajamidha, Vimidha, and Purumidha. One son of Ajamidha was Kanva, whose son was Medhatiti. His other son, Ajamidha's other son, was Brahatishu, whose son was Brahadvasu. His son was Brahatkarman. His son was Jayadratha, whose son was Vishvajit. His son was Senajit whose sons were Ruchirashva, Kashya, Dridhadhanush, and Vasahanu. The son of Ruchirashva was Pratusena. His son was Para. His son was Nipa. He had a hundred sons, of whom Samara, the principal, was the ruler of Kampilya. Samara had three sons, Para, Sampara, and Sadashva. Um, the son of Para was Pratu, his son was Sukrati, his son was Vibhratra, his son was Anuha, who married Kritvi, the daughter of Shuka, the son of Vyasa, and had by her Brahmadatta, his son was Vishvaksena, his son was Udaksena, and his son was Bhalata. The son of Dvimidha was Yavinara, his son was Dhritimat, his son was Satyadhriti, his son was Dridhanemi, his son was Suparshva, his son was Sumati, his son was um, Sannatimat, his son was Krita, to whom Hiranyanabha taught the philosophy of yoga, and he compiled 24 Sanghitas for the use of the Eastern Brahmanas who studied the Sama Veda. The son of Krita was, was Ugrayudha. 
by whose prowess the Nipa race of Kshatriyas was destroyed in a war. His son was Kshemya, his son was Suvira, his son was Nrapanjaya, his son was Bahurata. These were called the Pauravas. Ajamidha had a wife called Nilini, and by her he had a son named Nila. His son was Shanti, his son was Sushanti, his son was Purujanu, his son was Chakshu, his son was Haryashva, who had five sons, Mudgala, Sranjaya, Prahadishu, Pravira, and Kamkilya. From Mudgala descended the Modgalya Brahmanas. Um, oh, sorry, I, I missed one there. Mudgala, Sranjaya, Varjaya, Pravita, and Kampilya. Their father said, um, the, the father of the five sons, Mudgala, Sranjaya, Prahadishu, Pravira, and Kampilya said, these, are my, uh, these my five sons are able to protect their countries, and hence they are termed the Panchalas, since my five or Pancha sons are able alam to protect the countries. So the uh, Panchalas means the five able ones. Their country of Panchala uh, was the country north and west of what became Delhi, um, uh, that whole region at the foot of the Himalayas. Um, it was afterwards divided into northern Panchala and southern Panchala, the part that is north. Of, so the Ganga runs through the country of Panchala. Later, it was divided into the northern Panchala is Panchala north of the Ganga, and southern Panchala is Panchala south of the Ganga. Um, they had their various chief cities, and it comes greatly into the history of the Mahabharata, the Panchala kingdoms. So those are the five princes after whom that whole country took its name and who were its first rulers. So from Mudgala, the eldest of the Panchalas, descended the Modgalya Brahmanas. Um, the Modgalya Brahmanas were the keepers of the Mudgala Purana. They were Ganapatyas, worshippers of Mahaganapati. He had also a son, Mudgala, also had a son named um, Bahvashva, who had two children, twins, a son and daughter, Divodasa and Ahalya. The son of Shatadvat of Gautama by Ahalya was Shatananda. His son was Satyadhriti who was proficient in military science. Being enamored of the Apsaras Urvashi, Satyadhriti was the parent, by her, of two children, a boy and a girl. Shantanu a Raja, while hunting, found these children exposed in a clump of long shara grass. Since the Apsaras Urvashi um, did not marry Satyadriti, but just had sex with him and then had children and abandoned them in the wilderness um, for Raja Shantanu to find, and being compassionate toward them, took them and brought them up himself. As they were nurtured through his compassion, or Kripa, they were named Kripa and Kripi, children of compassion. The latter, Kripi, became the wife of Drona and the mother of Ashvataman. The son of Divo, Divodasa was Mitrayu, from whom the Maitreya Brahmanas were descended. His son was Chavana, his son was Sudasa, his son was Saudasa, also called Zahadeva, his son was Somaka. He had a hundred sons, of whom Jantu was the eldest and Prashata the youngest. The son of Prashata, so unusually here the lineage passed to the youngest child, was Drupada. His son was Drashtadyumna. His son was Drashtaketu. Another son of Ajamidha was named Raksha. His son was Samvarana. His son was Kuru, who gave his name to the holy district Kurukshetra, the field of Kuru, named after this man, Kuru this king of the region. His sons were Sudhanu, uh, Sudhanush, Jahnu, Parikshit, and many others. The son of Sudhanush was Suhotra. His son was Chyavana. His son was Krataka. His son was Uparichara.
Chara de Vasu. Um, Uparichara de Vasu is well known in the Mahabharata. Um, Indra himself, Devaraja Indra, made um, uh, Uparichara de Vasu the king of Chedi. Uh, he had seven children, Vrhadrata, Pratyagra, Kushamba, Mavela, Matsya, and others. The son of Vrhadrata was Kushagra, his son was Rishabha, his son was Pushpavat, his son was Satyadrata, his son was Sudhanvan, and his son was Jantu. Vrihadratra had another son, who being born in two parts, which were put together by a female fiend named Jata, it was, uh, was denominated Jarasandha, or joined back together by, uh, by Jara. His son was Sahadeva, his son was Somapi, his son was Srutasravas. These were all kings of Magadha, the Magadha kingdom. Chapter 20. Parashara went on. Parikshit, the son of Kuru, had four sons, Janamejaya, Srutasena, Ugrasena, and Bhimasena. The son of Jahnu was Surata. His son was Vidurata, his son was Sarvabhoma, his son was Jayasena, his son was Aravin, his son was Ayutayus, his son was Akrodhana, one of his sons was Devatiti and another was called Riksha, his son was Dilipa, his son was Pratipa, who had three sons, Devapi, Shantanu, and Bahika. The first adopted in childhood a forest life, um, going directly from childhood to Vanaprastha Ashrama, never marrying. And so this, his next youngest brother, Shantanu, became king. Of him, this verse is spread through the earth. Shantanu is his name because if he lays his hands upon an old man, he restores him to youth, and by him men ob obtain shanti, or peace. In the kingdom over which Shantanu ruled, there was no rain for 12 years. Apprehensive that the country would become a desert, the king assembled the Brahmanas and asked them why no rain fell and what fault he had committed. They told him that he was, as it were, a younger brother married before an elder, for he was in enjoyment of the earth, which was the right of his elder brother, Devapi. What then am I to do, replied the Raja, to which they replied, until the gods shall be displeased with Devapi by his declining from the path of righteousness, the kingdom is his, and to him, therefore, you should resign it. When the minister of the king, um, Asmarsarin, heard this, he collected a number of ascetics who taught doctrines opposed to those of the Vedas and sent them into the forest. For a meeting with Devapi, they perverted the understanding of the simple-minded prince and led him to adopt heretical notions. In the meantime, Shantanu, being much distressed to think that he had been guilty of the offense intimated by the Brahmanas, sent them before him into the woods and then proceeded thither himself to restore the kingdom to his elder brother. When the Brahmanas arrived at the hermitage of Devapi, they informed him that according to the doctrines of the Vedas, succession to a kingdom was the right of the elder brother, but he entered into discussion with them and in various ways advanced arguments which had the defect of being contrary to the precepts of the Vedas. When the Brahmanas heard this, they turned to Shantanu and said, Come hither, Raja. You need to give yourself no further trouble in this matter. The dearth is at an end. This man has fallen from his state, for he has uttered words of disrespect to the authority of the eternal uncreated Veda. And when the elder brother is denigrated, there is no sin in the prior espousals of his junior. Shantanu, therefore, returned to his capital and administered the government as before. And his elder brother, Devapi, being degraded from his varna by repeating doctrines contrary to the Vedas, Indra poured down abundant rain, which was followed with plentiful harvests. The son of Bahlika was Somadatta, who had three sons, Bhuri, Bhurisravas, and Shala. The son of Shantanu was the illustrious and learned Bhishma, who was born to him by the holy river goddess Ganga, and he had by his wife Satyavati two sons, Chitrangada and Vichitravirya. Chitrangada, while yet a youth, was killed in a conflict with a Gandharva, also, uh, also called Chitrangada. So Ch Chitrangada, the human, was killed by a Gandharva, who by coincidence was of the same name. Vichitravirya married Amba and Ambalika, the daughters of the king of Kashi and indulging too freely in connubial rites, fell into a consumption of which he died. By command of Satyavati, 
my son, Krishna Dvaipayana, says Parashara, the father of Krishna Dvaipayana, ever obedient to his mother's wishes, begot upon the widows of his brother, the princes Dhritarashtra and Pandu, and upon a female servant, Vidura. Dhritarashtra had Duryodhana, Dushasana, and other sons to the number of a hundred. Pandu, having incurred the curse of a deer whose mate he had killed in the chase, was deterred from procreating children. And his wife Kunti bore to him in consequence three sons who were begotten by the deities Dharma, Vayu, and Indra, namely Yudhishthira, Bhima, and Arjuna. And his wife Madri had two sons, Nakula and Sahadeva, by the celestial sons of Ashini. These had each a son by Draupadi. The son of Yudhishthira was Prativindhya. The son of Bhima was Sruta Soma. The son of Arjuna was Sruta Kirti. The son of Nakula was Shatanika. And the son of Sahadeva was Sruta Karman. The Pandavas had also other sons by their other wives. By his wife Yodheyi, Yudhishthira had Devaka. The son of Bhima by Hidimba, a Rakshasi in the forest, was Ghatotkacha. And he also had Sarvatraga by his wife Kashi. The son of Sahadeva by his wife Vijaya was Suhotra. And Niramitra was the son of Nakula by his wife um, Karenumati. Arjuna had Iravat by the Nagini Ulupi. Babruvahana, uh, uh, who was adopted at the son, as the son of his maternal grandfather, or the daughter of the king of Manipura, and by his wife Subhadra, the sister of Krishna. Arjuna had the son Abhimanyu, uh, uh, or sorry, the, yeah, yes, yes, uh, Arjuna had the son Abhimanyu, who even in extreme youth was renowned for his valor and his strength and crushed the chariots of his foes in fight, taking most after his father. The son of Abhimanyu by his wife Uttara was Parikshit, who after the Kurus were all destroyed, was himself killed in his mother's womb by the magical weapon of Brahma hurled by Ashvatthama. He was, however, restored to life by the clemency of that being whose feet received the homage of all the Asuras and the Devas, and, for who, and who for his own pleasure had assumed a human shape. This, of course, referring to Sri Krishna himself, who resurrected the dead Parikshit within his mother's womb. This Prince Parikshit, now today, reigns over the whole world with undivided sway. Because, of course, Parashara is speaking this during the reign of Parikshit. And that, I think, is a good place to stop for today. Um, it has just caught up to present day as of when Parashara gave these teachings um, and Parashara then continues straight on into the future prophesying the future kings of the line and we can get into that next week cool. I have some thank you Haribo. Haribo yes thank you thank you for coming I have some questions Devala sure yes go ahead you mentioned um, Urvashi, and you mentioned the um, uh, king or prince who had been killed by a Gandharva and of the same name. And I wondered if, was this a time, or these were times when um, Gandharvans and Apsaras walked the earth commonly, or? Yes, yes. Uh, well, commonly. It was considered a somewhat extraordinary event to encounter one, but it definitely was something that happened. You you hear often of people encountering them. Uh, it, it was perhaps, um, I would say rare, but on par with like seeing some, um, encountering a celebrity perhaps. It, it, it certainly wasn't nearly as extraordinary as it would be today. It happened a lot more. So these were definitely different yugas. Oh, yeah, yes. All of this is prior to, none of this has yet gotten, well, at the very end of this narrative, we finally caught up to the start of Kali Yuga. Uh -huh. All of this before has been referring to events of prior yugas. Um, the, at the very end, when the Pandava's reign passes to Parikshit, that is the beginning of Kali Yuga. Beginning of Kali Yuga. Yes. Yeah, when Krishna leaves, that's the beginning of Kali Yuga. Yes, when Krishna left. And Krishna left um, it just before the beginning of the reign of, uh, of Parikshit. So in, in 
present day from the perspective of the narration of Parashara to his Shishya Maitreya, it, it is very early Kali Yuga. It has been Kali Yuga for um, only like 10 years or so. Um, so all of this previous history they're talking about until the very end is took place in earlier yugas. Wow. And they were able to maintain the, the genealogy, the, these yeah. records. Yes. It, well, really there, were, there was an entire class of people called the suttas, um, the genealogical, basically genealogists, um, suttas, whose entire life's work was to memorize these genealogies and pass them down. Um, like, for example, um, Ugrasravasota, who taught the Bhagavata Purana to the sages of Maimisha Forest, he was such a sutta. His, his profession was a genealogist. Um, and it was especially impressive because they did, it all, they did it all from memory. They didn't write it down. Right. So like, his whole life's work was just to memorize these genealogies. The Rishi Parashara, um, very impressively, has also done so. But they weren't just restricted to the names and times. They had the stories with them, it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They the told all sorts of stories about them. The importance was not just in, like it's fallen to now in terms of names and places and times. It was the more of the fullness. The, the... Yeah, yes. And, and, and indeed, if you go combing through all the different Vedic texts that have come down to us, you can find out the stories and lots of specific information about almost every specific person named in all these lists. Uh, it, most of it is still recorded in different places. Parashara doesn't go into great detail in all of it to his disciple Maitreya because he doesn't think it would necessarily be a value of, or of interest to Maitreya. He elaborates a little bit here and there. But in there's different texts that if you compile them all, you can track down the stories of most of these people. Wow. So that was the importance of maintaining the genealogy was in maintaining these these stories to empower and inspire people, perhaps? Or... Empower, yes. And, and also they were um, the main people for whom these genealogies were recorded were the members of the line. Uh -huh. that, a, that a prince born into the line would be raised knowing the history and the glories of their ancestors uh -huh. and um, essentially inspired to try to live up to their virtues and try to learn from the faults of those who fell from dharma. Um, so mostly the people who these genealogies were told to were princes born in, into these lines. So it was like kind of a curriculum for royal education. Yes, it makes sense. To learn from the mistakes of those and be inspired by those yeah. who were virtuous. Yes. You, you'd mentioned there were some kshatriyas who became Brahmins. So was yeah. there more flexibility? I thought that it was kind of restricted. And it didn't used to be. Yeah, there's the, the old texts are full of mention, explicit mentions of people changing their varna, people becoming Brahmins who weren't originally Brahmins and so on. Um, it became more restricted. That definitely wouldn't happen in India today. But um, it used to be much more fluid. By yes. virtue of, of virtue and, and spiritual devotion or... Yes, um, just if... Faith. if by by they be, they became brahmins means they adopted the life of brahmins and and they and they lived doing the dharma of brahmins and it was acceptable that's interesting yes it was it was fully parashara says it matter of factly like it doesn't even require explanation they became brahmins yeah it means if they started if they started to enact the dharma of brahmins then they are brahmins he mm. clearly doesn't think there was any more to it than that yeah yeah what else, if I may ask, was Prashram uh, noted for? Famous uh, for? Parashara, the guru of this? Yes. Or, okay. Telling the stories. Yes, Parashara. He, well, he's most famous for his son, um, for, for being the father of someone more famous. 
Um, his son was Krishna Dvaipayana Vyasa, Veda Vyasa, who compiled the Vedas yes. um, and authored the Mahabharata and many of the Puranas. Um, he was a great, he was a great enlightened sage. Um, he was uh, Parashara in his own right. Um, but he was definitely most famous for the fame of his son. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Namaste. Yeah. Thank you very much. Namaste.